if any of you are wondering how I, uh, how I um, film these videos, it's not by putting a, uh, a camera in front of me and uh, recording my screen because that would just be too uh, too awkward. What I use is a uh, a um, desktop recording program called Camtasia, and uh, it was kind of expensive, but it was worth it because you, what it does is it's it's like a, a it's something that you can save tutorials on. You can make a tutorial and um, you can uh, record everything you do on the desktop. And uh, I just use it for my purposes. And uh, it's uh, it's proven really helpful because you basically select what area you want to record. And you can even if you have um, if you have a uh, a webcam, you can also record yourself while you're doing it. And you can also record audio. And um, Unfortunately, my uh, audio was brilliant, but it's uh, it's the best I can do under these circumstances. So basically, that's um, kind of it, really. But uh, every picture is kind of done in a similar fashion. I tend to separate all the layers out. Um, so at the moment, what happens is I I add in all the basic layers like hair, skin, and eyes, and teeth, and lips, and clothing color, and I leave the background till the very end. And uh, normally, uh, all I draw is the character because I, my speciality is mostly characters. And um, so I, I focus on the character first. And once the character is finished, uh, I normally don't know what the background is going to be, so I normally leave that till the very end. But um, normally, the background isn't that important. I tend to just draw wavy lines and use different filters, which is actually uh, quite fun because uh, you end up. Um, that's probably the most liberating part of these drawings. I mean, I enjoy drawing the characters, but I tend to do it in a similar fashion each time. So doing the uh, the background is actually quite a nice little uh, way of being experimental. And it's it's probably about the only part of it that really is experimental. Apart, uh, every drawing is kind of different and presents something new, but probably the most interesting part is coming up with the backgrounds. And normally I don't have much of an idea about what the background is going to be, so I tend to just leave it to the last minute to decide. And at first it just starts with drawing a few lines on the screen, and then I use like the liquefying feature, which um, if you go to the top uh, top of the screen, there's um, a bar called filters, and you can basically find this option called liquefy. And uh, the only problem is though, it takes a long time to load, so it's best not to rush it because it takes... Uh, um, you don't see it on my videos just because I pause the video when that happens, and um, uh, sometimes it can force uh, Photoshop to crash. So this is a big tip: make sure that you uh, save your progress as you go, because um, problems like this do happen. Where if you if you're really way along in your project, and then suddenly you use the liquefying or the filtering and things like that, uh, sometimes it can go wrong. Because what you can do is in the liquefy, it's fun because you can. You get different options, like you can expand, you can contract, you can pinch a picture and like drag it. So you can create like really kind of wavy effects and things like that. And um, so liquify is a good good way of creating interesting sort of patterns and shapes and stuff. And I, I normally use it for the background. Um, what I used to do was I used to take a picture and then that would become the background. But I would use this uh, filter called cutout, which almost like flattens the colors out and makes them into like a cartoon. But I kind of stopped doing that quite early. I mean, I don't know why. It's still a good technique, but I just kind of stopped using it for a while. And the, uh, and the eraser, and it's on a brush that's more like a um, dissolve. It's more like a dissolve. And um, sometimes um, I like to do like a solid sort of erasure, but here it's more like a... Uh, oh yeah, one of my favourites is the burn tool. That's uh, another one that I couldn't do without. Uh, the burn tool is a really big help. And... Uh, Normally all it is, is uh, I just put a solid colour down and then I start erasing it slowly, slowly and slowly. I used to use the burn feature quite a lot, and if you don't know what that is, it's a little icon under the paint bucket. It's a, you'll see it as a hand, and what it is, it's a burn. So basically, if, say you've got the colour yellow, it will turn it to red, uh, no, it will turn it to orange, then red, and then black. So it's literally like a, like a suntan. Uh, but it's perfect for doing like gradients and shadow and things like that. The only problem is uh, that I noticed was that I was kind of using this a bit excessively. So say I would only use one colour and then uh, that's it, I would just burn it. And uh, what all that would happen was I would create a nice gradient but the colours wouldn't look realistic. It would look like it was just toasted or something. So um, my idea was to use as uh, the burn as little as possible. Yeah, so... Uh, hopefully 
I can tell you some 